सो इसमें दैट ये फर्स्ट वी हैव टू आइडेंटिफाई our uh, strength and weakness because patient is coming to an ayurvedic ophthalmologist for his uh, solution of the condition so it may be or may not be managed by ayurveda so first of all we have to identify which are our strength areas and which are our weak areas so i think in the last classes you have identified or we have, you have familiar with a lot of uh, cases like uh, diabetic retinopathy various stages then uh, retinal detachment and various type of retinal diseases so first of all we have to uh, identify is it manageable by an ayurvedic physician or it should be referred so don't hesitate to uh, refer a patient if that patient needs a surgery for example an immediately or suddenly developed retinal detachment or a fully matured cataract in that conditions these are our weak areas so don't uh, stick on that cases just give most uh, reliable and effective treatment offer the maximum uh, effective treatment to the patient so but a lot of strength are with us so we have to identify which are the strength areas and which are the weak areas accordingly we have to categorize the approaching patient and the patient is coming not for the complete cure that we have to identify because patients are coming to a ayurvedic physician in most of the cases in the last stage maybe a proliferative diabetic retinopathy or advanced diabetic eye disease in that condition uh, the patient is well aware that the condition is not at all curable it the patient wants to retain his vision at that condition uh, we can approach that condition by offering that prognosis only so before starting or before approaching the uh, patient for a treatment just offer our aims and what we are expecting with our treatment that should be clearly defined otherwise we are unethical to the patient so first categorize the patient and patient to the manageable or weak area if the weak area take a second opinion nothing to be uh, hesitate to take a second opinion and uh, the condition should be well defined or well explained to the patient and that we can manage that is the condition that is manageable not a curable so the condition curable and manageable that are different so both of most of the conditions are manageable and patient is expecting that managing only from us so we can confidently we can proceed and last thing is that we have to identify the condition on the tridosha base whatever may be the condition it may be a retinal advanced retinopathy of prematurity or it may be a simple vitreous hemorrhage or it may be a lid swelling whatever the thing don't bother about the presentation of the patient but just analyze the case on the basis of tridosha means which dosha is prominent and which dosha is associated so accordingly we can plan the treatment so we have an idea or we have a solid uh, principle behind the treatment so based on that principle just decide it should be started with a lengana or lengana is not required accordingly if the vata pitta is there then no need of a, a long standing lengana but if the kapha association is there then we have to start with a lengana accordingly we can easily proceed and in the last class i have uh, shown a um, table of the drugs from that group we can easily select the drug which is of vata pitta shamana vata kapha shamana or pitta kapha shamana so this is the basic of the uh, treatment uh, when we are approaching complicated case or a simple case no difference okay so in uh, today's class i will uh, share few cases that we have managed nothing no data or no photos from the internet all these are from our clinics so these clinics how we have managed and what we have offered to the patient that i will explain and uh, according to that or uh, by your uh, knowledge or uh, your clinical doubts that we can clarify in the end of the session okay so this is a first case first case i have already written the di diagnosis as absolute glaucoma so uh, i think it is better to write the diagnosis in modern point of view also 
because if a patient is diagnosed as vadar pitta timira then if that patient is going to another ayurvedic doctor then that doctor also will be in confusion what may be the diagnosis so vata pitta timira means it is actually it is a perfect diagnosis in ayurvedic point of view but as per the consensus between the ayurvedic physicians we are not so much solid in the diagnosis so vata pitta timira means the lakshanas of few lakshanas of vata and the most lakshanas of pitta or few lakshanas of pitta and the most of the lakshanas of vata so we will be very much confused so if we are seeing a case of vata pitta timira diagnosed by an ayurvedic ophthalmologist then we have to take the history again and again so that we can identify the the role of vata and pitta so if you are writing the vata pitta timira and in the bracket the corresponding modern diagnosis then it is clear for example if we are uh, the Uh, diagnosing a case as sarakta sannipataja timira and if you are writing it is a pre proliferative diabetic retinopathy so it is clear the pathology is clear and what are the conditions happening in the retina that is also clear by the dosha predominance so if it is rakta pradhana means it is a proliferative so it is clear so there is no if we are writing the uh, rakta pitta timira then we have to take the history again so if you are writing the recta with the timira and in bracket if it is a proliferative diabetic retinopathy then the most of the ideas are very clear so please try to write the ayurvedic diagnosis first and in bracket what I, what is the modern diagnosis that will be very easy for an another ophthalmologist to review the case so okay so this is the first case that is of absolute glaucoma and Uh, the case is a 70 year old male patient presented with an opd with a marked blurring of vision for both eyes since 4 years and associated with the left eye pain watering and itching so the patient came to the opd with the pain watering and itching not for the blurring of vision because the patient is having blurring of vision since 4 years but now the patient is came because of pain watering and itching so the sudden blurring of vision associated with the eye pain this is all uh, happened in 4 years back and on further evaluation left side iop is found elevated so that iop is elevated but the patient came for the opd for that should be clear because the patient approached us for eye pain watering and itching so it is our duty to reduce the eye pain watering and itching not for regaining the vision because uh, from this presentation itself we can see that the patient is aware that his vision is very much reduced and it cannot be regained the patient is aware about that so don't give uh, more promise to the patient about the vision so the patient is well aware and he is very much uh, um, in uh, familiar or uh, satisfied with his vision so we have our duty to reduce the eye pain watering and itching okay so uh, he has a history of intravitreal injection for the left eye for two times cataract surgery in left uh, right eye then uh, eye oil implantation that means cataract uh, surgery uh, both eyes have underwent cataract surgery and it is a diagnosed case of it is important it is a diagnosed case of left eye neovascular glaucoma and in the right eye the patient underwent peripheral button hole iridectomy and it is diagnosed case of primary closed angle glaucoma and the associated comorbidities type 2 diabetes mellitus hypertension cardiovascular disease obstructive a lot of systemic diseases prostatic megaly and very a long means uh, systems uh, most of the systems are involved so if this case is coming to your opd so patient is satisfied if we can reduce the pain watering and itch so this was the condition of that patient visual acuity hm positive and left eye it is pl negative that means left eye is totally blind and right is also it is legally blind so the patient is a blind patient but the pain is very severe that he can he cannot tolerate the pain and when we done the aplanation tonometry the right eye is having 28 mm of hg and the left eye is having 54 mm of hg so this left eye pain made that patient to visit the clinic 
and he is very aware that a modern uh, lot of modern drugs are done and everything is done but the patient is not at all getting relief so he approached an alternative on slit lamp examination hazy cornea sluggish reaction of pupil and left eye hazy cornea circumciliary congestion is positive neovascularization of cornea neovascularization of cornea because of it is of neovascular glaucoma so it is our aim to reduce the iop and reduce the pain of the patient and we have approached the patient and we clearly uh, mentioned to the patient that we will reduce the pain watering and itching nothing more and the patient is satisfied with that because the patient has not able to sleep because of that irritating pulsing piercing type of pain so patient want to reduce the pain and we have started with the patya sharanga kashayam twice daily punarnavadi kashayam twice daily so the four times under kashayam and chandra parpagolika along with the kashayam and these are the procedures that we have done the uh, local procedures that is netra sekam with trifala kashayam vidalagam with karthavattu trifala churnam trifala kash uh, in trifala kashayam then adhakaya kashaya dhara that means the uh, we have already mentioned that this increase of iop may be due to the sarvanga shofa that means the whole body is very much means kidney center problem and the patient has some edematous looking so we have planned for a whole body kashaya dhara and we have done the rukshavasti rukshavasti with gandharvasadi kashaya and hingojadi churnam so this rukshavasti and kashaya dhara is for the whole body so if the whole body is under if the system is under control then we can easily reduce the iop because the patient is a diabetes mellitus and hypertension and uh, the talam we have done with the rasnadi churnamatic shiravela and the leeching that was the our strength the leeching procedure that that leeching procedure was done on the sclera means in very rare conditions we are uh, doing the scleral uh, leeching but this is a condition as we know the patient is having severe iop with more than 50 with severe circumciliary congestion and severe excruciating pain so we have tried with the sclera uh, sclera leeching so uh, this is the procedure that we have done you can see the uh, leeching that we have done on the temporal side and you can see the circumcellular very congested blood vessels near to that uh, leech so by this leeching procedure uh, we are trying to reduce the pain and improve the circulation and reduce the congestion this is our aim because it is a clearly with the Uh, predominant and vata associated condition and uh, clearly in modern diagnosis it is a neovascular glaucoma so we should uh, confirm that it is a pitta recta associated condition so the leeching is the best treatment so by applying the leech itself we know that there will be profuse bleeding because when we will remove the uh, leech there will be bleeding that we know but by explaining this condition or this after procedure to the patient we have done the scleral leech so the next day you can see the uh, temporal sclera is very much engorged with the blade when we have removed the leech the there will be severe and massive uh, subconjunctival hemorrhage happened and accordingly then we have started means our aim is to reduce the pain so whatever the associated features we are not bothered so if circumstances uh, subconjunctival hemorrhage will happen we can manage because a very good treatment is mentioned for the sub subconjunctival hemorrhage in our class that is sarkara mastuk shaudra shaudra and vitalaka so we have started that one and gradually gradually with i think uh, within 7 days the patient is almost clear and uh, this is the before after uh, comparison so uh, we are not at all bothered about the corneal haziness and uh, uh, regaining the vision we have bothered about reducing the congestion and reducing the pain so when we compare you can see that the circumciliary the severe circumciliary congestion is reduced and you can see there is not any mark of the leech it is completely cured and the patient completely relieved of the pain watering and itching that was our aim and in the last we have again done the iop so right eye 12 and left eye 38 so from the 54 it is reduced to 38 with a single sitting of leech so the pain and the watering of the eye was very much reduced and the patient is satisfied and that we have managed that condition so this is the first case i would like to share so this is a rare means rare cases we have to approach the patient with rare treatment also so this type of scleral leeching is we can practice 
if uh, the patient is having this type of presentation because patient is well aware about his vision and his aim it is reduced the pain and our we have done the treatment for that only okay so this is a next case this is a in idiopathic intracranial hypertension it is a case of idiopathic intracranial hypertension so we can uh, diagnose it as a sandimitta uh, linganasha or everything it means uh, uh, anything or it is a sandipada uh, uh, timira kaasha anything we can diagnose it is a dis uh, means uh, drishti uh, roga means the patient came, uh, approached with so in the, in the last case the patient approached with us so we can look at that is a sarvakshi roga no doubt this because there is a pain watering everything is also it is a sarvakshi roga. first we have to diagnose it as a sarvakshi roga then we can easily diagnose it as a adhimantha then which is it is a hadadhimantha like that it is a idiopathic intracranial hypertension we can, if we are writing this diagnosis in the bracket then it will be clear so it's a case of 64 year old male patient presented with the blurring of vision for three months the patient approached us with the blurring of vision for three months and history of severe several severe head trauma and on fundus examination the patient is having bilateral papillary this was the presentation so the patient is not having any headache or nothing the patient is presented with blurring of vision and he giving history of several head trauma and the papillary edema is our uh, clinical finding so this is the uh, fundus photograph that of patient we have done in our institute you can see it is a classical papillary edema that is splinter hemorrhage the disc uh, margins are very much blurred and engorged the blood vessels and uh, the uh, if we can see in the means uh, direct ophthalmoscopy the disc edema that can be calculated as two disc diopter or three disc diopter if we are seeing uh, if we clearly seen on the um, this uh, right eye you can see the blood vessels are not at all visible in the center but it is uh, visible from the periphery so why it is not visible in the center means in the center it is defocused because the the disc is swelled to the vitreous so the vessels are bulged to the vitreous area so this area is not clear that does not means there is no blood vessel if we on the fundus examination if we are adjusting the power of the fundus uh, means of the microscope then we can see uh, the blood vessel of this area in another focal point so this is a classical feature of Uh, papillary edema so it is having a severe papillary edema so that this disc is bulged and there are two focus that is a uh, optic disc or optic cup in one focus and retina in the other focus so you can see the, here the blood vessels are very clear so this area is focused and in the other eye also comparatively it is less but there is also the splint hemorrhages and uh, you can see the arteries are very narrow and the veins are broadened that means it is some sort of arteriospasm it indicated the systemic hypertension and these are the treatment that he have so, so if a patient is coming uh, to us with that presentation how we we will approach that condition it is very somewhat confused so uh, we got from the history that the patient the condition is mainly due to the several uh, severe head trauma and we have identified or we have uh, calculated that the condition may be due to the shiro abishanta so if the shiro abishanta should be involved uh, means uh, under pathology then the comparable disease it is sandhi mithalinganasha means actually this mithalinganasha is a sadhya condition and there is no linganasha is also occurred but the approach that we have done as a sandimitta lingadasha approach that is shiro abishanta hara treatment that we have done and in the sandimitta lingadasha also it is mentioned that shiro vidabad abishanta nidarshanai so it is the reason for the sandimitta lingadasha and in one uh, condition the susruta is also telling that is a uh, shiro abishanta mitta and uh, ajare also mentioned that abishanta treatment can be done that means it is not at all um, means uh, incurable like that of anemitta linganasha this anemitta linganasha that can manage so that this is the treatment that we have done to that patient that the internal medicine that is punarnavadi kashaya arthavillo kashayam that is mainly for the shodahara treatment and the gomutra arka the gomutra arka that we have given to the patient for a long duration that is we have made the Uh, go mutrarka in our institute itself by the distillation method and 
the uh, effect of that gomotra arka is it is a very good srodo rodahara and shofahara so that we have given for the patient and in the shira the Hello, sir. Hello. In the uh, in the samprapti itself, it is clear that we have to approach. The Ajayi also clearly mentioned that it is the uh, condition of shiro abhishanda. So we have. Treated that for that shiro abhishanda by this approach. So if you are treating the shiro abhishanda stage, there is no need of treating uh, in the local uh, like say gas chodana that that nothing that we have done because after this course of treatment that we have again dilated the patient. So this patient was admitted in our hospital and done this treatment. I think it uh, uh, was taken around one month duration and after that. Uh, this treatment, we have again dilated the patient and the fundus that was seen. So you can see the fundus. The, that was the condition of the fundus. You can see the all the hemorrhages are absorbed. And you can see the center of the uh, disc. You can see the vessels start appearing to the single focus. So the vessels we can trace in, in this condition. So it is very much reduced. And the patient gained the vision uh, 6 by 9 partial from 6 by 24 means in the initial state the patient came to us for the blurring of vision and at that time the vision was 6 by 24 not was that much blind so I have told that the vision San Nimitta Linganash is not a correct diagnosis that in that because there is no Linganasha the patient was 6 by 24 but we have actually in this condition how we should approach that condition that we have approached in the management of sanimitha linganasha that means it is the uh, shiro abhishanda hara treatment that we have done not the netra abhishanda so this was the condition so this is the just a comparison that it is a before treatment and after treatment so the the, the uh, severity of the disc edema that you can see from here though, so that this is a disc here though, so here the disc margins are clearly defined and here you can see the blood vessels are not clear so here start appearing that means the disc receded to the original position from the bulging to the vitreous and here you can see the all the hemorrhages all the hemorrhages that are resolved and here also the complete hemorrhages that is resolved so the patient gained the vision 6 by 9 partial and uh, all the features are relieved so then we have not tried for the local treatment and we have given the treatment for the continuation of this uh, condition as a Mrutu Nitya Viryajana drug. That means just like that of uh, the Shofahara Chikilsa that we have done to the patient and the patient is, was very satisfied and the 6 by 9 vision was corrected and uh, the la time of discharge the patient was 6 by 9 it was plus 0 0.75 it was corrected to 6 by 6 partial. So the patient was discharged and uh, he have done, we have na done nothing in the eye. And uh, in the review also, the patient was very much satisfied and this condition was never reoccurred. Re Actually, it was a case of intracranial hypertension. Actually, we don't know that intracranial hypertension is resolved or not. We have examined the eye and the patient was under treatment for his intracranial hypertension from one modern uh, neurologist. That was patient's... Was that medicines and this condition, the blurring of vision that we have resolved. So this was a second case. So, so here means uh, if the diagnosis is not perfect, don't fear. Why, 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 we, with the, which principle that we have approached that patient, it is important. So if that principle of approach is clear, then no need to uh, 
uh, no need to be confused at any stage of the treatment. So first we have approached for the Abhishandahara, which is located in the Shira. We have done all that thing. No Snehavana, no Tala, no Snigdha Prayoga that we have done. All our Ruksha and the Shira Abhishandahara treatment done. Then we have assessed. So if we are in the right way, then it will recede. Otherwise that bleeding will increase. No, we have done the Ruksha treatment. So, if you are sure that this condition is due to the srodha, rodha and abhishanda, then that will condition will definitely improve. So, if the first uh, examination of the patient, so the, uh, the first review of the patient, if it is not resolving, then we can think about some other pathology. So, if it is under our uh, control, then no need to change the line of management or there no, no need to try, uh, start the local treatment. And you can see here some exudates are remaining, but the patient was uh, uh, satisfied with that condition and uh, we have already discharged the patient. And no further treatment that we have done. And uh, this is a case of uh, BRVO. That is branch retinal venous occlusion. So uh, he is a patient, a 30-year-old male patient presented in the OPD uh, with blurring of vision for the left eye since one and a half months. And two months back, he met with an eye injury hit by a cement brick and had a history of bleeding per rectum with the hemorrhoids. So the third point, that is means bleeding per rectum with the hemorrhoids. So in many of the cases like uh, the... Uh, branch retinal venous occlusion or central retinal artery occlusion or vitreous hemorrhage. In most of that cases, we are ex um, find that this uh, history of hemorrhoids is a common factor. So uh, we uh, made some a few uh, survey means if the patient is coming to this condition, we are just uh, assessing the. Uh, history of piles or apana vaigunya. So we find that uh, most of the patient presenting with the venous occlusion is having a history of piles or having some constipation or something related to the apana vayu vaigunya. So it is evident that from our pathology itself, it is Ajarya clearly mentioned that the samprapti starts from the apana vayu. So, um, apana anulomenum is very, very important in many of the cases. So, it's the branch retinal venous occlusion means it is nothing but it's a stroke. So, if the patient is having a strong history of uh, constipation or uh, means hemorrhoids, then that patient may develop stroke anywhere in the either maybe in the eye or it may be in the ear or it may be in the head. Anywhere it happens. If it is happening in the ear, it is uh, uh, the sudden sensory. You know, uh, sudden sensory neural hearing loss due to the cochlear artery occlusion. It may also happen anywhere in the body it may happen. So it is our duty because why I am telling that if you are discharging the patient, the patient should be aware about the bowel habit and the strict anulomena should be continued for a long time. So uh, here this uh, hemorrhoids bleeding per rectum is uh, somewhat uh, restricting our treatment also. If you are planning, means uh, if it is considered as an urtagata rectabita, and if you are planning uh, for a math um, is uh, kashaya vasti uh, with uh, tiktaka khrita or uh, tikta kashaya or padavaladi kashaya, we cannot do that because the patient is having bleeding per rectum due to hemorrhoids. So this gives the um, prognosis of the condition somewhat difficult. And the condition is due to the samprati begins from that and it is our duty the samprapti vigatana should be done. And this is this are the status of that condition. Right eye perfectly normal and left eye 6 by 12 partial. So uh, uh, IOP was also normal and then dilated fundus examination, the, this was the picture. So, so this was so the picture that we have taken uh, from the fundus photo. You can see the stomato splash appearance that is a branch retinal venous occlusion. So, um, this branch retinal venous occlusion, so if a case is coming like that, what should be the approach? So, we can clearly see that it is a uh, recta pitta pradhana disease. So, if it is a recta pitta pradhana disease, the involvement of rasa is also will be there because uh, as we have discussed, there is a slight demarcation between the rasa and the recta. So, it is the rasa, recta means it is definitely having a Shofa 
or ama associated condition so our treatment should be rectal prasadaka and rukshana treatment no need or nothing to do with the brahmana here we have to do the rectal prasadaka and rukshana treatment and here we have to approach the patient like the pitta chatimira chikitsa shiro mukha leba and shodhana vasti but here we have not planned the vasti here we have to do the shiro mukha leba that is our treatment so if there is any bleeding occurs in the retina if it is a fresh bleeding then the lebana and the sega is very important and in the diabetic retinopathy also we have approaching that that lengana treatment is the best option and uh, this was the treatment that we have done that is uh, the guluchadi kashayam 90 ml bd kaishwara gukulu gandharverandam gandharverandam night this vadani lomanathum that we have started from the first day itself and the another tablet that we have started the internal medicine so these were the procedures that we have done in the local treatment that's a sega with the st laksha amalagi and manjishta that means kashaya made from st laksha amalagi and manjishta all these are rakta pitta prasadaka drugs and talam with the st laksha manjishta and kshira vela taila kshira vela taila because we have, why the taila is opted here the patient was very much restless and uh, the sleep was very much disturbed so the patient i think in one uh, about three or four days the patient is not at all getting sleep so that condition will again worse our patsam prapti so if you are doing all the rukshana treatment in the shira there may be vada kopa so the patient may have reduced sleep in that condition we have to give some snigdata but it will not uh, interfere with our line of approach so the st laksha manjishta Uh, with the kshira vela taila that we have done as a talam only for once a day and vidalagam with the mukkadi yoga and the jadamayadi yoga the jadamayadi yoga it is mentioned in the vada rakta chikitsa and the mukkadi yoga which is mentioned in the uh, sahasra yoga in the netra yoga chikitsa so we have uh, mixed that uh, drugs in laksha kashaya it is not mentioned here the laksha kashaya and we have made the vidalagam for 14 days and again in along with that vidalaga we have started the vara st and damayati with the mukha leba also that both that we have done uh, simultaneously and after this we have done the talavodichil that means kuluchadi kashaya jurna that is kuluchadi kashaya jurna so when we uh, go through the um, effect of gulochadi kashaya yoga it is pitta shleshma haratva so pitta shleshma haratva is the property of gulochadi so we have adopted again we can see the guluji is the agriyoshad of vadarakta so uh, indirectly we are approaching this patient the drugs from the vadashonda chikitsa that we are opting here so in that condition when we are thinking about a kshiravasti it is good if we can perform a kshiravasti here it is good but in this condition due to this hemorrhoids it is not at all possible so this kshiravasti also can be done in the end stage or in the later stage not in the beginning stage and guluchadi kashaya churnam manjishtadi kashaya churnam jadamayadi in laksha kashaya that we have done in as talapodiche and then we have done the shiro kashay dhara shiro dhara with kashay with guluchi adin and manjishtadi kashay these are the uh, drugs that we have adopted for the treatment of that case so here on not no sneha prayoga that we have done all the treatment that we have oriented as the rakta pitta prasadaga with shiro leba mukha leba sega uh, vidalaga and uh, shira sega so the patient is under uh, treatment and uh, the follow up the next fundus photo that we have planned uh, on the next week due to the covid issues the follow up was not uh, the patient is under follow up by phone only so the uh, fundus photo had to be collected and the last the patient the vision was uh, you can see the first the vision was 6 by 12 partial the vision is improved to 6 by 12 full because the in this condition we can see one complication that if it, the patient is having the central adenous venous occlusion then there is a chance of 
original neovascularization. So neovascular glaucoma or uh, the uh, uh, central serous retinopathy, CSR, also may have been seen there to be fluid collection in the macula. The, these are the complications of that uh, central retinal venous occlusion. So I think the vision will improve with the time. with the foreign body sensation, uh, discharge from eyes, light intolerance, and occasional eye pain and blurring of vision for the past 25 years. So you can see the patient is presented with the past 25 years history and the patient's age is 30. So the patient developed this complaint that he's at her five years of age. So she had a, a head drug disease mainly due to the history of allergy to the sulfur drug, sulfur drug allergy, and underwent the submandibular gland uh, transplantation surgery. Not submandibular, it is a parotid gland. It is a parotid gland transplantation surgery also done. So that means misdire means the transposition of the stents duct is done to the eyes. So the patient is coming with a, a discharge from eyes. So this is a severe case of Steven Johnson syndrome. The, you see the vision. It is a right eye having counting fingers 80 centimeter and left eye HM positive. This was the condition of the patient. So uh, these are the visual acuity. So means uh, 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 as the treatment progressed. So this uh, counting fingers 80 centimeter. It is removed to. Uh, counting fingers two and a half meters. So this counting fingers two and a half meters means it is not a very much an improvement. And in the left eye also, you can see that HM positive, it is improved to counting fingers 40 centimeters. So as we, when we are seeing this improvement, we uh, can, uh, we will uh, think that it is not a good improvement. But as far as the patient is concerned, it was a dr drastic improvement. Because the patient is only interested in the reading. So by this counting fingers two and a half meter means the patient can easily read. That was the very good uh, improvement that the patient have uh, got. And if we are also very much satisfied with that improvement. The patient was, uh, at the time of admission, the patient cannot see the books. To uh, As we discussed, the patient is having only 30 years of Age, so she has to uh, help her uh, children for the studies. And at that time, she was not able to read the, his uh, child's book and help him. So at that time of discharge, the patient was very easily read the book and she was very much satisfied. So the, you can see the counting fingers 80 centimeter to counting fingers two and a half meter means it is not an improvement for a uh, other person. If, uh, means except the patient, nobody will realize it as an improvement. But the patient, as far as the patient is con concerned, it was a very much important. So if you are giving a, a improvement of vision, at least five or ten centimeter improvement, that is also very much very good, very good. Means as far as the patient, means a, a, a patient like this, she can easily take food, she can see her foods. And she can uh, do her near works. That was very, very uh, appreciable by the patient. So don't hesitate to treat a patient for a little improvement. If we can give a small improvement to the patient, that will be very much contributing. So this was the uh, this was the condition of the hair eyes at the time of ad admission. You can see the cornea was very hazy and always watering eye because the always watering eye because the watering the water is coming from the parotid gland. So it is continuously watering. So if she takes food, then it will be continuously watered. So patient is always keeping her towel in his uh, in her hand for mopping the tears, but having severe drying.
So uh, this was the you can see that is a coronary is hazy and the uh, circumciliary congestion that also you can see the patient the cornea was a neovascularized cornea and we have done the manage and we have done the management of the patient by explaining all our limitation and uh, at the time of admission we told that uh, as far as uh, concerned we can just we can get some improvement but we cannot uh, say this much of improvement can happen but the sticky discharge and the foreign body sensation that point that we have concentrated much because minus so this is the case of at that time we know that but really brahmana treatment then only we have the treatment hello uh, hello hello am i audible uh, yes sir in between it is getting uh, broken uh, the voice audible? is breaking in now you are audible sir now you are audible now it is oh okay okay so uh, this was the internal medicines uh, that uh, we have uh, suggested for that patient this is our internal medicines so chiriyuladi kashayam hingu ajadi guliga sudarshanam tablet so this three that is mainly for the amapachana so we have started the treatment with the amapachana then so uh, then drakshadi kashaya so drakshadi kashaya for reducing the burning sensation the patient have severe photophobia so the photophobia means uh, it is that we have already discussed it is a uh, rakta pitta associated condition so we have started the drakshadi kashaya and we have given the trivut lekhyam with avivatti churnam and hani draksha himam daily so we have started a mrudu virejana daily for that trivut lekhyam avivatti churnam hani and draksha hima kashaya that we have opted so all these are uh, reducing the inflammation it is mainly for reducing the inflammation so we uh, when we see this picture you can see this uh, this is having the uh, severe inflammation of the conjunctiva due to the dryness so for reducing so if we are starting any type of snikta kriya in this inflamed eye the patient cannot tolerate so the patient have foreign body sensation dryness and if we put one drop of krutha the patient will be very much highly irritated so we have to wait for the snikta application so the inflammation the ocular surface inflammation should be reduced before starting the snehana so we have oriented for that so nitya means mrudu virejana that bed time that we have given along with trifala gukulu and padola mooladi and padoladi kashai it is also this padola mooladi kashai is also a tikshna virejana and it is also mentioned in the kushta chikitsa so the kushta chikitsa and uh, the shofa chikitsa that mainly we have adopted the drugs are mainly adopted from there so this trivut lekhyam padola mooladi kashai these are very very Uh, important to reduce the ocular surface inflammation and uh, these are the procedures that we have done for the patient first we started with the uddurthana so with the kolagulla thadi churnam then sega with the eranda mola and the kshira then just after all these procedures the after the internal rukshana kriya and uh, bahya rukshana kriya with uddurthana just we started with the sega with the kshira so eranda mola kshi eranda mola kshira that we have done as a sega then the patient accepted that sneha then we moved to the sneha vana with vidari adikrutam for 6 days then abhyanga dushma swada for 2 days and virejana with avibhati so it was a very good virejana and uh, then we started again with the aschodana then we started the ocular application direct ocular application before that we have tested the application or acceptance of the sneha by the eranda mola kshira by sega not by the aschodana then after this we have started the aschodana with the st madhu tarvi lodra kashaya then also we have not given the sneha we started with the uh, kashaya aschodana 
So the drugs that is HT Madhu, Darvi and Lothra, all these are Rekta Pitta Prasadaka drugs. And then we moved to the Nasya with the Padoladi Kritam. Then again we have started the Stikta Nasya. And here at, up to this time we cannot stay, we, uh, have not given the Snikta to the ocular surface. And uh, then we started the Talam and uh, Again, the patient posted for the Kshiravasti. Kshiravasti is the Padola Nimbadi Kshiravasti. That from the Ashtanga Hridaya reference that we have given. So this Kshiravasti and that uh, uh, Padola Muladi Kashaya and Trivurt Lekha, all these are very, very important for a long-standing chronic ocular surface inflammation. And then we started the Taji. Taji, I think in the previous classes, it may be uh, explored. So... That is by the Kathali Param. It is uh, a variety of banana. And Irati Mudram, that is Sashti Madhu. And Maramanyal, it is uh, Darvi and Lothra. So Kathali, Sashti uh, Madhu, uh, Darvi and Lothra. We have made all these to a paste form and uh, applied this paste in a gauze. And that gauze is applied over the closed eyelids. So by this, we have started some Snigda Shida Prayoga in the eye. And then we have started the uh, Durva, that is Karuga and Padha, leaves. And the Nimpa Patra and Shadavi uh, Mula. Fresh, that is the leaves of Vepin Taliri, that is Nimba Patra, and the Shadavari Mula, fresh, that was crushed, and Nelika, that means uh, Amalagi, uh, Lothra, Rekta Chantana, Laksha, uh, Shadiva, that is Naruni Tikiranga, then Manchista, Chantanam, dried, and morning. So, all this that we have made into a Himakashaya and started Sega and with Pada in the evening. So, in the morning time, we have done this Sega and in the evening time, the Pada. Pada means that is Pada leaves crushed in uh, and uh, uh, that is made into a paste form and we have applied over the closed eyelids. And after this, we have started the Piju with the Jeevan Dhyadikritam. Piju means the external application of Jeevan Dhyadikritam over the closed eyelids for three days. And then we have started the Shirodhara, that is Kshiradhara, that is Manjishtadi Kashaya, Lodra Churna and Kshira Kashaya. So here, first we have done the Kshira Vasti and after that we have done the Kshiradhara. So these are the approaches that we have done to that patient. And in the discharge time, we have given the Jeevanya Ganagrita for the Aschodhana. Jeevanya Ganagrita for the Aschodhana. So the, if the patient is coming with a dryness, it may be or may not be due to the Rukshada. Here we cannot uh, see the Rukshada because the patient is always having severe type of uh, watering. And this is mainly due to the inflammation. This ocular surface inflammation made the condition very much worse. So if we are uh, treating a patient of ocular surface inflammation, there is no need of any tarpana. There is no any need of snikta as chodana in the first. So we have to observe where how this if we start the snikta or tarpana in the first time, the patient suddenly will, will be run away. That much irritation will be created. So wait for the reduction of the ocular surface inflammation. So he, we have approached, approached this condition to reduce the ocular surface inflammation only. We have done all the treatment for reducing the ocular surface inflammation. So when the ocular surface inflammation start reducing, the patient is relieved of the foreign body sensation. The patient got mainly the improvement in the vision as well as the foreign body sensation is completely gone off and the patient can expose uh, or his uh, hair cornea to the environment. That means the severe burning sensation is also reduced. So the patient was very much satisfied and she is under follow-up treatment uh, till now. She is a patient from, uh, actually from uh, Trichur, but now she is residing at Mumbai. 
and this was the case of severe Steven Johnson syndrome. So I would like to emphasize that if a patient is approaching with the dryness, don't jump to the SNCTA application. Wait for the uh, ocular uh, surface inflammation to be subsided, then start only the SNCTA kriya. But before starting the SNCTA kriya, just check is that I can accept the SNCTA by Netraviju or Kshiradhara. If it is good, then start for the uh, SNCTA application to the ocular surface. Otherwise, the patient will be very much irritated. And uh, this is a case of uh, orbital uh, pseudotumor. That means the patient is presented with 39 female complaint of headache since month associated with pain and swelling in the left eye. So the main complaint was the headache and associated with the pain and swelling in the left eye. That the stressful job, sleeplessness, nights since months and light intolerance was the first symptom followed by pain and protrusion of the eye. Had a history of migraine, prostate and gastric ulcer. And these are the investigations. That means uh, uh, scan uh, reveals chronic pan-sinusitis and blocked osteomyatal complex DNS to left side with the bony space on the right left side. And the CT lesion of the superolateral quadrant at the left side of orbital apex, mild indentation of uh, superior rectus, laveter papillary superiors complex and LR muscle, MRI brain, left orbital pseudotumor. So this left orbital pseudotumor, the patient came, she was not interested in the surgery and uh, uh, I think that uh, modern side also not insisted for the surgery. Just wait and watch. That was their um, opinion, maybe due to the complication they have uh, uh, expected. So here we have to see from these investigations, we can see there is a osteomyatal complex blockage. So we can see there is a show of here. So we have to approach this condition mainly as a Ekanka show of means that cannot approach that condition as a simple show of a treatment, but we have to start the treatment uh, with the, the show of hara drugs. So uh, we have, these are the internal medicines, that is the Google Tiktakam uh, Kashayam, 45 ml. So this Google Tiktakam Kashayam that we have uh, readily started because of the pain. So that a severe headache was there. So we have started and this Punarnavadi Kashayam, Chandra Parva and Gokshara Punarnavadi Gugulu that we have started for 21 days. And these are the procedures that we have done. First, we have started the Avagundhanam. Avagundhanam is a procedure, I think it is explained in the Ashtanga Sangriha. Punarnava Patra, Shigri Patra and Trifala Churnam. Punarnava Patra, Shigri Patra and Trifala Churnam in Dhanyamalam. So we have started the Avagundhanam in Dhanyamalam. So we have, uh, we know that Dhanyamala is a very good drug for reducing the show off. For 20 days, we have continuously done. And then, uh, meanwhile, we have done the Virajana with Avivati Churna. Then we have started the Sandhavanjana. Sandhavanjana, uh, uh, meanwhile, because of her eye pain, and uh, uh, I think maybe due to some uh, that uh, uh, coating in the eye, and we said, Kaful Kleshatwa in the eye that we have started the Sandhavanjana, which is explained in the treatment of Sashofa, Shofa, Akshibaga in the Ashtanga Hradaya. And then we have done the Churnavasti. Churnavasti that uh, we have already explained in the previous case also. The Churnavasti that we have done with the Thanyamalam and the Vaishwanara Churna. The Vaishwanara Churna is not written here. Thanyamala plus Vaishwanara Churna that we have done for the uh, as a Churnavasti. And then we have done the Takradhara. So after this, this Churnavasti, Takradhara, and Avagundana, all these are the Rukshana treatment that we have done. Then we have started the Pradimarshanasya. So we have to consider the uh, osteomyatal complex blockage also in uh, uh, cases like this. And here the Pradimarshanasya started with the Nimba, Savam, and Shigri Bija, and Sainthava. That means Shigri Bija crushed to uh, a pieces and made to a small bolus by wrapping in a cloth and put in the Nimbasava, I think around 20 ml Nimbasava and overnight it is kept and the next day morning uh, crushed it and uh, signed over, was added and uh, taken for the Pradimarshanasya. And uh, it is a very good Thikshanasya, it is very good for reducing the or uh, resolving the 
uh, that sinus blockage and then we have started the bidalagam bidalagam with karthavattu and marmavattu then nasya with shadbindu so after the rukshana nasya we have started the nasya with shadbindu daila and jaluga also we have done with left eyelid and forehead for four days these are the picture this was the first appearance of the picture you can see the eye was somewhat bulged and the patient the main problem the patient we faced was the pain and after the treatment the pain was completely relieved and uh, patient is asymptomatic we can say patient is asymptomatic but we don't know how much that tumor is resolved that had to be consulted or uh, uh, ct scan the patient is awaiting for the ct scan we have to repeat for that but as when the patient is discharged the vision was perfectly normal and there was no headache or no symptoms associated with the head and eyes that is the only uh, aim of our treatment and uh, uh, this is a case of pathological myopia pathological myopia means it is a degenerative myopia so it's a, um, it is a, a 16 year old male patient uh, presented with blurring of vision for both eyes in 10 years 10 years that is right i more than left eye especially for viewing the distant object that is a pathological myopia so this is a visual status that is right eye uncorrected visual acuity is counting fingers 1 meter and best correction was cf 2 meters only in the right eye and the left eye uncorrected 6 by 60 and the left eye corrected 6 by 6 partial so the right eye having counting fingers 2 meter and the left eye having 6 by 6 vision it is a pathological myopia so we have done the scan it was the right eye having 29.62 mm so as a sake of interest uh, we have done the axial uh, length because there is maybe we as we have know that if the patient is having high myopia there is a chance of retinal detachment there may be the elongation of the posterior segment so just to evaluate the posterior segment we have done the axial length so it is 29.62 so it is very much uh, increased in the axial length so we can expect the retina is very much stretched so there will be a degeneration in the definitely there will be a degeneration in the retina and the anterior chamber depth it is almost normal and the lens thickness is almost normal so the anterior segment is almost normal but the posterior segment is abnormal so this is a classical feature of pathological myopia so we can suspect some retro det detachment in this condition also so these are the procedures that we have done for that patient Uh, first we have done the deepana with the chiruvillu adi kashayam and hingvajadi churnam then acha snehavana after it we has started the acha snehavana with the jeevandyadi hrda for the first four days and then mahatrayfala hrda for the next three days so uh, starting from the 30 gram uh, i think uh, it was uh, up to 180 gram the patient was uh, underwent the acha snehavana then abhyanga and steam for two days and virajana with gandharvastadi erana 20 ml in dashamula kshira that we have done for the virajana and also though i think by seeing the treatment protocol itself you can see it is a vada pradhana sannipataja timira or linganasha we can uh, think like that means no need to uh, diagnose the exact for the treatment we have to see the dosha only so it is a vada pradhana sannipataja dosha so talam with rasna jambiram and baladailam then nasyam with anudailam and for the first 3 days anudailam and the next 4 days with trifala khritam so the first 3 uh, days we have done the anudailam for uh, mainly for that shrodha shodhanam is thailam is more effective for uh, shodhana purpose and nasyam next we have done for the brahmana nasya that is trifala khritam so because it is a vata pradana condition and then we have done the shirodhara with kshira bala and mahamasha tailam for the shirodhara and then the tarpana with jeevaniya gana khritam for 5 days and kudabhagam for with snehana kudabhagam this are the this was the complete course of the treatment in the ip so the approach is vata pradana sannipadaja treatment approach that we have done
So that patient, in the last case, uh, that patient, the vision is uh, counting fingers 2 meter. That uh, vision, I think it is uh, improved to 6 by 60 only, not further. That because we cannot expect so much improvement uh, uh, immediately after the treatment. It, it The treatment course should be continued. I think that we have offered, I think, uh, three continuous treatment that we have to uh, give for the patient because the patient is uh, only 16 years of age and uh, the uh, progression of the myopia, the patient is more concerned about the left eye. The left eye, the patient is having 6 by 60 partial and 6 by 6 partial. So we are protecting that eye along with the treating of the damaged eye. So both we have approached by this treatment. And uh, this is a case of uh, wet ARMD. So it is a 58-year-old woman, uh, type 2 diabetes mellitus for the past six years and left ocular pain associated with headache, distorted and blurring of vision and noticed flashes of light and floaters in front of the right eye. So by approaching, we can see it is a, uh, definitely there is it is a uh, retina involved condition. To diagnose the case of macular edema and coronary uh, neovascular brain for the left eye and the CSR for the right eye. So the patient is somewhat complicated, CSR and the CNVM and macular edema and suggested for three doses of intravitreal anti vegf injection followed by a PRP, pan-retinal photocoagulation for the left eye with an interval of one month period. So the patient was not interested in that and came to our hospital. So this was the picture uh, investigated uh, for the confirmation of the uh, ARMD. And uh, this was the visual acuity chart that uh, we have recorded in the uh, time of admission. The right eye having 6 by 36 and the left eye having counting fingers 2 meter. And in the right eye, it was the best corrected visual acuity was 6 by 12 and the left eye, it was not improving. And the IUP was 24 mm right eye and 18 mm left eye. So, in the in due course of the treatment, we have uh, recorded the visual acuity and uh, 13521. It is the last visual acuity that we have recorded. The count, uh, the right eye 6 by 36 is improved to 6 by 18 partial and the correction same 6 by 12. But the left eye counting fingers 2 meter, it is improved to 6 by 60 and the vision improved to 6 by 36. And the Tonometry 24 mm changed to 19 mm and 18 mm changed to 16 mm. So the patient is almost very much satisfied. The counting fingers 2 meter, the patient got improvement up to 6 by 36. So the patient is, this was uh, the last, uh, I think, uh, the last week the patient came for the last follow up. So this was the procedures that we have done. Uh, first, we have approached with the uh, Vijayarana Snehavana. We have not done the Acha Snehavana because of fear of that uh, edema. The Tikta Gradam that we have opted and Abhyanga with the Bala Dailam done, then Virejana with Avipati Churnam, then Takradhara, Nasya with the Shadbindu Dailam, Anjana with the Kaji Avan in the left eye and right eye Chandanadi. So the Kaji Avan is a patient is having that uh, cataract in the left eye and the right eye having we need that central retinal means uh, that uh, CNVM management for that we have started the Chandanadi. And the Shirodhara with the Madhyashtyadi Taila Matik Shirabella and the Vasti with the Mahatu Taidika Vasti. Here we have opted the Mahatu Taidika Vasti. So this Vasti is also from the uh, Vadarekta Chigilsa. So we are uh, expecting the wet ARMD, that means central uh, scoroidal neovascular membrane formation. So for ultimate treatment of that one, we have done the Vasti. Okay, up to, I think we have discussed um, seven cases and now uh, the detailed case history I have stopped here and now I am uh, showing few cases that came to our uh, clinics and hospital for the management. So this was a patient came with, uh, I think you, easily, you can easily identify, it is a left eye tosis as a uh, result of increased hypertension, the patient developed a left eye tosis. So if a patient is coming like this, what should be done? So uh, we always suspect uh, the tosis may be associated due to some srodhavarada. The srodhavarada is the factor which uh, uh, hampers the movement. That means the vada cannot properly work due to the srodhavarada. So to remove, to relieve the srodhavarada, the best treatment is lengana. So start with the lengana and after that go for the brimhana like analeva.
So we have approached the treatment with the Google with the Kashayam, Shatharana Goliga, Gandharvarana 50 ml. So as we have uh, discussed earlier, if a patient is coming with any type of features of stroke, so this is also a stroke because of the nerve is paralyzed. So uh, just start the Vada Anilomena. First, irrespective of the case, you just start the Apana Vayu Anilomena. So we can start with the Gandharvarana with the Trifala Kashayam. And Nasya with Anudela also, we have started. I think Nasya started somewhat uh, later stage. It is it was an OPD case, and uh, started the Anudela and end up with the Nandaram Avarti. And uh, Sega for Dashamula, Erandamula, Villa Mula, the Kashaya Sega that we have adopted. It is a Dashamula, Erandamula, and the Villa Mula uh, Sega and Avagundana. Here also we have started the Avagundana with Shigri Patra, Erandamula in Trifala Kashaya and Dhanyamla. This is also very good for relieving the Srodorodha. And last, we have done the Shastika Sveta locally. So um, we know that it's a Vadaha, it is a pure Vadika condition, but cannot, I think, in my opinion, don't jump to the Brahmana. We have to consider the srodo rodha in the manifestation of the disease. So approach the patient with the srodo rodha hara medicines and his procedures and then go for the brumhana. So you can see the patient is, I think, within two weeks, the patient is very much improved. That means that he was almost 90, 90% 90 it was normal. So before it was very much closed and just after the treatment of uh, two weeks, it is very much improved. So I think... Uh, if we start the Brumhana in the first stage, the, uh, this type of improvement we cannot expect because we are giving more and more Sniktada. So if the Srodharodha is unresolved uh, Srodharodha or undetected Srodharodha by our mind, that will be worse. So it is our principle, Brumhyastu Mridu Lengayid. So always start with the Lengana treatment we just before starting the Brumhana. So by the Lenghana treatment itself, the patient will start improving. So we can easily conclude we are in the right way. Okay, so this is a similar condition um, that was uh, treated. I think this Im uh, improvement was uh, happened within one or two weeks, not more than that. So this is a case of severe subconjunctural hemorrhage. It's a severe subconjunctural hemorrhage may be due to some uh, local injury. Injury and the patient start to immediately the start to bleeding, and it was a very profuse bleeding. So this uh, profuse bleeding patient is uh, approaching to us. That all we know that this is self-resolvable condition. Subcutaneous so hemorrhage need it will be resolved within 21 days. So our aim is to absorb the blood completely. Means if it is a profuse hemorrhage, then after the hemorrhage resolution, there will be some brown material or somewhat uh, the deposit of the uh, hemoglobin or uh, some blood part will be remained and the sclera will become muddy looking. So our aim is the complete resolution without any remnants. So uh, if a case is approaching like that, this was the treatment that is all these are OPD cases. That is Drakshadi Kashayam, that Kaishara Gogulu, Avipati Churnam, bed type. So here also means just consider the Apana Vayu Anilomanatom. By uh, in the last case, we have done with the uh, Gandhar Verandam because it is a purely Vata associated. Here this is a Pitta associated which because of Abhikatacha. Then Avipati Churna, we have started and the Trifila Gogulu. And Ashodanam is a simple Ashodana that is Sharkara, Mastu, and Kshaudra. Ashodana, thrice daily that we have started so these are the different stages of that resolution that the, it will start reducing so you can see the absorbed blood uh, area you can see a brownish discoloration in that area so it is next it is it is improved and it is start resolving and here also you can see some brown material is collected but in the last stage is completely resolved there is no remnant was there so a yeah, bleeding these are the two comparison of the before after treatment. If a bleeding like this uh, severe hemorrhage is a severe hemorrhage like this happening, we cannot expect a complete resolution with a clear sclera. But if we are starting our treatment, then we can regain the proper healthy sclera without any discoloration. And if discoloration is there, then we can start the anjana. Easily we can start some 
sort of lekhana anjana but the, if you are doing the treatment strictly our control without any exposure to the hot climate sunlight and the uh, abathya means spicy hot items should be avoided and alcohol should be avoided with the strict pathya the patient is following i think this case is resolved within 2 weeks the 2 weeks this complete blood is resolved with the clear sclera so this is just also a simple condition this patient approached Uh, to the opd with the fall of chemical chemical you can see the fluorescent stain you can see this this staining is visible from outside now need of a blue filter from the slit lamp so uh, at that condition means after just after staining we have uh, visualized the stain area because that much cornea is damaged otherwise if it is a punctate staining we have to look the cornea with the blue filter from the slit lamp here uh, uh, the with a naked eye with a natural light itself that stain was very clear so we have taken the photo so uh, and the next day morning this picture is also from the same patient with the fluorescent uh, application it was very clear in the next day morning so it is this type of uh, de- cases are very easily manageable so we have to adopt the only the sadhyavarna chikitsa and bandage so this are so the bandage of ice with durva honey done and manjishtari kashaya given and trifala google two dds given along with the bandage so this is another case you can easily identify the case it is as a uh, fall in the bathroom and it is the fact uh, means uh, Uh, here means in the uh, frontal area some injury in the frontal area that means a scalp means uh, the uh, area is damaged and the patient immediately developed is a classical feature of acunai that means it is a anterior cranial fossa uh, injury sign the patient suddenly developed the she cannot open the eye fully with the blood so this full lid engorged with the blood with the very heavy bag of blood the patient cannot open the eye so we start within 3 days the patient completely that area is completely resolved of the brain and the patient can easily open the eye that collected blood easily dispersed from that area and the, if that area is dispersed other area can easily be uh, absorbed uh, as its own but the patient was very worried about this uh, heaviness and uh, the com- i was completely closed so the treatment that we have adopted is the draksharadi kashaya with kaishwara guguru and the vidalaga here the most important treatment is the vidalaga that is jadamayadi churna and mukkadi gulika along with murtigadi seka and followed by the chandanadi ashodana with these three simple medicines we have done the management of that condition so this is a case uh, of uh, Mm, you can see it is a case of uh, uh, scleritis it is a case of scleritis the patient was very much worried about the redness and the recurrence along with the severe tenderness over the sclerosis very painful condition so you can see that this was the uh, first uh, um, picture of the patient and uh, gradually it starts resolving and finally it completely resolved so i think it happened within 5 to 6 days within 5 to 6 days it's completely relieved and the patient is completely uh, re- relieved of the pain watering and tenderness so this was the treatment that we have gone uh, done that is the maha manjishtadi kashaya kaishwara gogulu avipatti churna and kalyana gula and sega with esti trifala and the vidalaga with karathavattu and trifala churna these are the simple treatment that we have done and in, i think the, this type of condition the systemic treatment is more important and this was also a severe form of conjunctivitis you can see the patient approached with severe redness and a foreign body sensation with the discharge you can see the lower fornix upper fornix and when we were to the eyelid it was a membrane formation was there so in this condition we know that we are very much confused about the involvement of diphtheria or not but we just try to remove that membrane so it was not bleeding so we confirm that it is not a um, diphtheria and uh, it was a membranous conjunctivitis and we have these are the different stages of the treatment so you can see here the upper lid that coating is completely relieved and uh, the patient was almost normal so in that condition first we have removed that membrane with the saindava honey pradisarana and kshalana 
and the padavala mooladi kashaya 60 ml so if there is a severe ocular surface inflammation that we are suspecting the padavala mooladi kashayam is a very good drug of tikshna virejana then kaishara gugulu padavala adi kashayam after the tikshna virejana started the padavala adi kashayam with mani vatra kulanta vivati churna in the bed time and the vidalaga we have started the mukhadi and the karthavattu sega with manjishtadi kashaya sega and ashchadana with chandanadi these are the simple treatment that we have given all these are simple cases so it is a case of uh, um, you can see this is a case of uh, sirapidaga that is uh, nodular episcleritis it is easily manageable i think no need of further explanation so this is these are also a nodular scleritis this was also very much easily resolved by the opd treatment so this is a simple case of uh, uh, edema then as you can see the edema over the upper eyelid and that is also very much easily resolved by the application of vidalaga and these are the various type of foreign body that uh, came to our opd so i have put this picture because the common site of foreign body location is this that is the just below the sulcus subtarsalis so uh, if the patient is having severe foreign body sensation and uh, if cannot identify the foreign body anywhere in the ocular surface just divert the upper lid and uh, examine the sul sulcus subtarsalis so that will be the common location of the foreign body the removal of the foreign body is very easy and here you can see the is the foreign body is stick on the limbal area so just by putting a drop of silocaine we can easily remove the foreign body and this was a case of uh, uh, just like the previous one it was a uh, nodular episcleritis so if you are suspecting a nodular episcleritis in children the deworming that means krimihara chikitsa is very much necessary so the deworming is a good treatment or that should be done if a patient is approaching in the with the nodal episcleritis especially in the pediatric age so this is a case of i think you can easily identify this is a post herpetic semblis uh, herpes zoster of thalamicus and for the patient came means so all the conditions were managed by phone only because i know you know that it is a contagious disease and it can be spread so the condition was managed by phone and the patient came to the opd with a severe post herpetic neuralgia so that post herpetic neuralgia that we have managed in our clinic with the help of especially in the line of management of visarpa chikitsa that we have adopted the gugulu dikta kashayam then uh, uh, means uh, virechanam after giving the vicharana snehavana and the application of the dikta krita application locally and uh, this is a case of uh, lagara that also it is i think it no need to be explained further this is a case of severe uh, stay that means anjana uh, bedaga uh, if the stay is there there may be it is a associated uh, skin inflammation will be accompanied so the child was very much you can see the other eye also there is stay and uh, this condition was patient was very much by looking itself you can see the redness so it is clearly the rakta pitta pradana condition if the rakta pitta pradana condition the first line of treatment is the lavana so the lavana means it here it is the vidalaga is the main treatment and it is i think it is resolved within 4 days and the treatment was a gulchadi kashayam and kaishara gugulu with mukhadi yoga simple mukhadi yoga and seka with trifala lothra darvi kashaya it was completely resolved so i think uh, uh, almost we are approaching to the uh, Sir, it has forwarded me time, and this was a case of uh, Rajesh yesterday. Yes, sir. Uh, left eye, then right eye, and left fast six days about fifteen days back. Hello, I'm here. Yeah, uh, I got missed, Hello, sir. Can you just repeat it once more? Yeah, can you please repeat it once more, sir? It was it went. Uh, it was not audible in between. Okay, I think the phone phone call came. So, so this was the day one of your uh, our participants has uh, forwarded.
patient came sudden loss of vision right eye and left eye uh, is 6 by 9 and given past history about 15 days back she felt a little headache and blurred vision for two days but suddenly next morning patient lost right eye vision and visited a local doctor and they told there is need of surgery patient resisted for surgery and came to our hospital for treatment with the above sent report so this was the report i think the impression it was uh, written that a well defined solid enhancing mass seen predominantly in supracella and extending into cellular region superiorly displacing involving optic chiasma as described above so the differential diagnosis it is a supracellular meningioma or a pituitary macroadenoma suggested hpr correlation so here the case the case means it is somewhat confusing if the patient is having a, a pituitary macroadenoma means the pituitary adenoma means the pituitary gland is located just above the optic chiasma so if the pituitary adenoma is there then it will cause a compressive effect so here in the scan also it is mentioned that it is a compressive effect the compressive effect to the optic chiasma the compressive effect to the optic chiasma means as we have discussed uh, beyond the optic nerve the visual acuity cannot be completely lost because we know that in the chiasma the decussation is happened so one eye is a fiber is crossed to the other side so the complete loss of vision i think if it is due to the mass lesion here the case explained that uh, the patient lost uh, eye vision complete loss of vision i think it is very very rare in that condition if that is happened then we have to see the normal eye so here we the uh, most important test is the perimetry we have to go for the perimetry if the patient is presented with one eye normal and one one eye blind so when we go to the perimetry then the normal eye also will show the hemianopic type of field defect so here the hemianopic type of field defect is the usually presenting complaint and this the macroadenoma means it is gradually increasing in the size but the patient presented with a sudden suddenly next morning patient lost the vision so here we have to uh, take some details about the uh, treat uh, means uh, the case so that we can go for a further opinion and i in the beginning of the presentation i emphasized that we have strength and we have weakness so if it is a mass occupying lesion is there and if it is that or mass occupying lesion is compressing the uh nearby structures and that mass should be removed then it should be we don't wait for further if we cannot offer a good line of treatment and uh, uh, we cannot resist the patient from a surgery if the surgery is necessary then it is it should be but uh if the patient is having uh, the main problem of the surgery is that if that is completely pressed the chiasma then the pen patient cannot regain the complete vision so there may be some landmark of that adenoma will be there we can manage that one easily but cannot resist a patient from a surgery if that is needed so for this if our diagnosis is correct and this loss of vision is due to patients that the pituitary adenoma then the other eye will definitely show the field defect so we have to do the perimetry in this condition then only we can say what is maybe the real cause that may be due to some other cause the one eye may the complete loss of uh, vision in one eye may be due to various causes so we cannot uh, diagnose the case based on this presentation here the perimetry is very essential to tell or to decide the treatment the patient is coming to us for a alternative and if we are bound to give a best treatment to that patient if the patient is afraid of the surgery and the surgery is definitely needed then we should convince the patient about the condition and we should convince the patient for the surgery and send that patient back to that surgeon if that is necessary then don't hesitate for a surgery and if we can assure the further treatment means the patient mainly if a patient having a brain tumor will be afraid 
due to the post operative complications so we can ensure that after the surgery if you have any such type of problem then we will manage just give like that of assurance and if we are uh, by treating if the condition is going to be worsen then we have taken unethically from the patient the valuable time the time is very crucial so clearly evaluate the patient and uh, uh, go for the perimetry the perimetry if the perimetry shows a gross field defect that means the compression is very very high rate of or high grade compression is there then we have to think about the surgery okay so uh, that, uh, this is a reference letter from giridharai institute i think it is from uh, Mm, the famous eye hospital uh, ernakulam so this uh, i have put here this is our strength here the allopathy said that we cannot do anything this is a reference letter uh, that given to me uh, because the patient was not in a good condition and uh, the patient was very much uh, reduced and panic so before starting our treatment we have sent to a maximum uh, occupied well established center for the second opinion means the patient should also uh, understand that we are also searching for a best treatment means uh, what are the facilities available the patient should understand that these facilities are not at all uh, beneficial for treating my condition then the patient will stick on or will believe in ayurveda and will never go to a further opinion so this is a letter with reference to means i have uh, given the le uh, letter to that doctor and aged 66 years who was examined for the first time in our institute the first time i have sent for that patient for a Uh, opinion in uh, 2018 uh, in the right eye she had underwent undergone surgery in 1996 and later retinal surgery bangalore in 2004 with silicon oil injection patient had irregular follow up and removed silicon oil only 2014 in kerala in the right eye retina was beautifully attached with the glucomatous optic atrophy and no perception of light vision you see which is beautifully attached the retina is beautifully attached but no vision that is no perception of vision then what is the need of beautifully attached so the glucomatous optic atrophy and no perception of light in that beautifully attached retina there is nothing to do in the right eye because of the loss of vision is due to optic atrophy they are letting that they have done the surgery they have done the silicon oil injection and everything and they are telling that it is beautifully attached but there is no vision and we cannot do anything so this is the case of optic atrophy and in the left eye uh, he had a sudden defective vision 18 months back he was advised to surgery but did not go currently his vision is hand movements so in the second eye also the patient developed a condition due to the fear of the first surgery the patient cannot advised for a surgery he was advised to surgery but didn't go didn't go currently his vision was hand movements there is a total retinal detachment with the pvr posterior vitreal uh, uh, detachment i think uh, pvr and uh, a big tear suprotemporally and uh, surgery at this delayed stage will not improve the vision much there is a gross delay in the presentation of left eye fundus photos is attached so here also mentioned that success rate of the eye is less than 20 percentage so in this condition the modern doctor cannot do anything so this is our strength we can try for the best to the patient so by this uh, opinion from the famous institute we came to know that most of the surgery is not successful here the main thing that the retina is beautifully attached but there is no perception of vision and in the other eye the patient is refused for the surgery because of fear of the same problem and the patient came to our institute and now we can easily treat the patient so these are the some cases if we start the treatment and the patient will get some sort of improvement in the vision the patient is having right eye blind with no p and left eye having only uh, perception uh, means so hand movements so if the patient hand movements means the patient is trying to read the books so if that
Hello, sir. Type of small improvement in the vision the patient will get and will be totally dependent or totally will trust on the Ayurveda and the treatment. Okay, so I think um, one more uh, thing I will like to share. So uh, this is this are I will stop within five minutes. These are the few uh, articles that we have published on the, our. Uh, uh, clinical case presentation. So these cases I have not uh, discussed in the first part of the presentation. So this is the effect of Sadhya Vamana in the treatment of central serous retinopathy, core retinopathy case study. So this was a case that we have managed in our institute with the Vamana. With the Vamana, as we know, in Vamana, most of the Netra Yoga, Vamana is strictly contraindicated. And uh, Avamya, Garbani, Ruksha, uh, like that, it is Timira is also mentioned. So in Trishti Yoga, the Vamana procedure is somewhat very complicated and in the samprapti also means uh, the doshas are uh, uh, supposed to go in the pradiloma gati and if you are going, doing the vamana then we are somewhat promoting that gati so in most of the diseases the vamana is not recommended but this is a case where the central serous retinopathy that has approached to the institute and we have seen that's only the edema that is a recently developed csr that we have observed so we have done a satyo vamana as a sort of if it is vamana if it is a kapha predominant condition the vamana can give the satyo vamana means it is a one day procedure only so the um, so as we know the even small children are also indicated for doing the vamana so why can't we try for that just that we have tried the sadhya vamana and the patient could got an instant relief so that uh, case i am uh, here sharing with you so uh, this is a complaint diminution and blurring of vision associated with the central diminution of vision in the both eyes, especially right here for the past last two weeks. You see the history for the last two weeks, the patient is having this problem. So uh, that the, ca ca the cardinal feature of central scotoma with the blurring of vision and edema. This was the only observation, no bleeding, no uh, neovascularization, nothing was there, only the edema. So this was the condition, the patient has left eye 5 by 60 was the vision and uh, the uh, treatment that uh, this you can see the uh, in the left eye uh, the five five by 60 was improved to six by 24 so this five by 60 is just before the vamana and uh, six by 24 is just after the vamana that means within two hours difference was this uh, change so this was the ocg this was the boct that we have done before the uh, vamana procedures you can see it is a large uh, serous fluid collection in the macular area and just immediately when we show this the improvement after the vamana just we immediately we send the patient for OCT and you can see the retina is completely attached and the edema is completely gone off so this is a case that we have managed with the vamana but in drishti yoga if it is an acutely presenting with the shofa then we can try for that and uh, uh, this is the case, uh, second one. Uh, uh, this is the Chayadana and Lekhana in the Palpam VKC. So here the procedure, the patient is having a child, uh, child patient is with the severe uh, discharge, itching and pain from the last, I think, uh, uh, itching of since two years associated with the severe watering here you think that uh, two years associated with severe uh, watering and photophobia after just waking up in the morning the child was able to open his only after long time so just waking up in the morning the child was able to open the eyes after a long time so there was also associated with sticky discharge and redness of the eye so uh, this was the appearance of the palpable conjunctiva then we have done the lekhana as uh, chedana and lekhana now, this is cobblestone appearance of the tarsal conjunctiva that we have removed by the chedana and followed by the lekhana. So you can see the almost most of the palpebral part is smooth and the patient immediately relieved of the four body sensation and the watering and photophobia. And uh, this is the condition, uh, this is a case uh, 
that we have done uh, that is the effectiveness of saptamrata loha granules in improving the quality of vision in children aged 5 to 11 years in a rural children this in the school program we have given the saptamrata loha granules for improving the quality of vision in children so we have uh, we have done a survey in the school and uh, selected the patient child having uh, eye strain watering uh, uh, and uh, i think here it is mentioned the eye strain here it is mentioned the eye pain watering itching and redness so the saptamrata loha is the classical resin and drug mentioned for the ocular diseases so uh, the uh, saptamrata loha having a property of uh, uh, improving the hb also so it is the loha churna along with the trifala and estimado uh, it is very good resin and drug so by this we have seen that the uh, improvement the overall it is statistically significant improvement in reducing the itching and redness the eye pain and watering it is it got only 20 percentage of the improvement but the itching and redness showed statistically significant that is p value less than 0.05 that is 52 to 52.38 reduction in the itching and redness of 50 percentage so the we calculated means we assumed that the redness is due to the itching that may be due to some sort of allergy or eye strain eye strain will also leads to itching so by this saptamrata granules only we We have made the saptamra the loha into the granule form and given to the children. And this is a case of star guards, Ayurvedic management of star guards macular degeneration. So I think this star guards disease also a very uh, high grade visual disability. Making disease, and the, the patients are mainly of young age, and the modern science has nothing to do for this type of degenerations. So here, uh, I think the case description, a uh, case study here report a patient with Stargardt disease treated with the classical Ayurveda treatment, a 30 year old man with Stargardt disease, 30 year, related in our hospital while doing the examination before. and the, the the vision i think vision is mentioned here so these are the treatment that we have done that is the preparation by deepana bajana acha sneha bana abhyanga virejana samsarjana marsana sya tarpana sneha putapaga shirodhara and yogavasti so the treatment they end up with yogavasti yogavasti is the madhyashtyadi thailand eranda mola kotha so this was the before treatment the vision was 4 by 60 and uh, the vision was improved to 6 by 60 in the uh, both eyes 4 by 60 to 6 by 60 and uh, uh, correction we got uh, 6 by 36 in the right eye and 6 by 24 so the 6 by 60 in the right eye improved to 6 by 36 and 6 by 60 in the left eye improved to 6 by 24 and the near vision also so if the macula is involved so near vision there will definitely be involved so the near vision is improved to n8 right eye and n6 left eye so the patient now also he is uh, contact with us and uh, he is driving and enjoying his uh, it he is a person from the it professional and he is enjoying his job with the uh, driving and all other things no problem till now and this is the last case i want to share with you this is a case of uh, lesuna rasayana in the management of ophthalmic neuralgia with the respect to atheria it is a case of ophthalmic neuralgia so Uh, here i would like to uh, emphasize the lesuna resina actually the lesuna is not pathya for eye but if the condition is related to the pain that means this vata peri is a sarvakshi roga and it is especially the ophthalmic neuralgia so we can try for the agri oushad of vata it is the lesuna so uh, this is a patient having severe means a lot of tegritol high dose tegritol the patient was taking just like the management of trigem neuralgia the patient was fed up with the modern drugs and uh, lastly they approached to the hospital so the 55 year old male patient of thalamic neuralgia was selected for the opd department of shala kendra so the complaint case study old male attend opd and a severe pain around the left eye especially was in a radiating pain from the medial to lateral side of the eyebrow and to the scalp was observed pain was 
current and last for almost 2 to 3 minutes means uh, electric shock like pain each episodes of the pain through brief was severe so that is affecting his daily routine exposure to wind cold heavy touch or the sp uh, specific area triggers the pain so the patient was very much uh, afraid and uh, uh, restricted and handicapped with his uh, pain and he cannot perform his daily activities so he was a reputed police officer and uh, uh, we have done the management with the, the same approach first lengana divana chasnehavana abhyanga then mukha abhyanga and kshira dhuma so we have done the kshira dhuma and uh, then followed by means uh, after the snehavana we have done the whole body abhinga and kshira duma in the especially in the urdu chatru part and virajana done with the dashamula kshira kashaya draksha himadi gandharvayarandam then nasyam with the varanadi kshira kritam we have uh, selected for the nasyam then shirodhara with uttama dailam and karpasasya dailam then we have done the jaluka as you know that means sarvakshi roga the vadapiriya uh, disease is a vethana sadhi vethana sadhi vyadhi mentioned by ajari susruta so we have done the jaluga avacharana then uh, lebanam uh, then yoga vasti also we have done then uh, vicharana snehavana again done then pradimarsana si and nadi sweda done and last we have done the rasayana that is lesion rasayana so by this lesion rasayana patient got a very very high improvement that means the complete the pain is means resolved and the patient was very much comfortable and not at all pain for his daily activities so the dose was uh, 5 ml to 9 ml so the starting dose was 5 ml and we have increased the dose 0.5 ml up to 9 ml so this uh, 9 ml lesioner assignment means lesioner assignment means lesioner sorasa was 9 ml lesioner sorasa was the last dose before that we have completed the dose in 9 days so um, at the time of discharge the patient was very comfortable and he is also under follow up now follow up means he is not taking any type of treatment or nothing or all modern drugs have stopped and he is very comfortable uh, till date so i think it was uh, all about from my side so this is of uh, end of my uh, presentation so i think uh, most of the matters i want to convey i have conveyed about the approach how to approach a patient and how to approach a complicated case and how to approach a simple case and what are the our strength and what are our weakness and where should we refer a patient so thank you thank you so much sir uh, it was a very good uh, information that we have passed out. We have really, uh, we, this helped us to improve our confidence level uh, when we are getting a case from uh, Shalakia side. Thank you so much for sharing such great information. Now I'm opening the discussion for uh, open discussion. Uh, if anyone have any queries or if anyone want to discuss any cases which they do have with them, uh, you can unmute and ask Sir directly. Good evening, sir. Am I audible? <clears throat> yes, yes. Uh, sir, uh, in uh, while treating many of the retinal uh, cases or even macular degeneration type of cases, sir, uh, in uh, while giving Ayurvedic treatment, uh, initially for four to five months, we get a very good result. I mean, uh, there is improvement in vision uh, uh, and related uh, issues get resolved. But sir, after four to five months, when vision gets stable, uh, it has been observed that after four to five months, there is no such kind of progress when uh, it stabilizes. So sir, what is your experience regarding these kind of cases? I think you mentioned uh, that uh, macular degeneration. Yes, yeah, sir, in general. I mean, uh, not in, uh, 
just macular degeneration even in diabetic retinopathy or say uh, macular particularly retinal cases okay okay in particularly the, that we have discussed the most of the conditions which are affecting the retina are yapi vyadhi so when it is a diabetic retinopathy as we know that it is a yap, uh, diabetes itself is a yapi vyadhi so if it is in a complicated stage then it is definitely it will be a yapi vyadhi so it is not completely curable so we are managing that condition so just like that intention only we are starting the treatment so in my personal opinion that patient need a close monitoring as well as a long term treatment so we have to after the ip treatment we have to give the patient medicines uh, just to uh, uh, resolve the sambrapti sambrapti vikatana is the very very important factor in that so we have to identify which all factors are uh, playing for the development of diabetic retinopathy so we have to avoid that condition and by the uh, resina treatment that we can uh, give for a long term and as well as the after the discharge i think this type of patients need more ip treatment rather as a single sitting so i think uh, this is a yapi vadi so we are ex ex expecting this much improvement and if we are the improvement that we can offer that we can definitely give to the patient